is your self-defense walking stick. This is a simple self-defense tool you can carry with you anywhere and everywhere you go. The Americans with Disabilities Act in the United States allows you to carry this anywhere in the United States. And the HIPAA laws allow you to not have to say anything about why you're carrying it. It's your personal medical business. So you're going to start with this in your right hand or your left hand. It doesn't matter. I want to show you some very simple moves first and then show you how to warm up with it. First thing you do is you're leaning on it. Someone comes up, you're going to strike them right between the groin, pick it up, and thrust through the middle of their body. You can slide it here, coming through with this angular strike from here. You can put the other hand on it, strike through this way. You can turn it around, hit it with that big hook. You can stick that into that flesh along the side of his face, rip that, remove something, his eyes, his nose, his ability to see. Those are just basic techniques. You can bring it straight down on top. You can go into the leg, into the arm or a joint. All basic, simple techniques. You can learn very quickly. Start with this warm up. You're gonna put it in one hand. You're gonna crank it forward. A proper warm up is very important when you start training for self-defense, using simple self-defense tools, how to use your walking cane for self-defense. You wanna build callus in your hand. You wanna get a feel for how it moves. You want it to be able to slide through your hand into any position. You're gonna get that by starting this way. You can do this sitting in a chair or standing up. Bring this across your body and back, kind of like you're slapping somebody across the face. Coming in with a backhand. Simple techniques from side to side. Pull your stomach up and in. Always drop your chin. Keep your other hand up. Practice good guard. You wanna keep this hand up so they can't hit your head. You went from side to side after about 30 seconds. Put it in the other hand and do the same thing. You can see I'm just gently holding it here, not so tight that it won't move. You want it to crank around. And then from here, you get that going after a while, bring it across the body and back, going side to side again, like you're coming this way, coming this way. Jennifer, thank you for being here. Jennifer says thank you for making these videos. I appreciate you guys, appreciate you all for being here. And at the same time, hello, Matthew, it's good to see you. Hello, Doug, it's good to see everybody. I appreciate very much all the generous, I get uh, letters in the mail. I got one this week from a gentleman named Jim. Very nice letter, a little bit of a donation. Help this thing go on. Really appreciate that. I, I appreciate the letters. The, the money is a nice bonus, but the letters are enough. That, that keeps me going. That's great motivation. So thank you. For those of you who've sent me actual snail mail, all the email you send me, from side to side, now you're warmed up. I wanna go into a different kind of turn. You're gonna bring your hand up a little bit. Thank you, Anthony. Anthony Anthony Gutierrez for being here. You're gonna make this turn to the outside of your body. The cane drops to the front, comes behind your ear, and again, back to the front. I want you to get stronger, more flexible wrists. Don't open this hand. This would be too easy. It's not gonna do anything for you. You want it closed so you can really stretch and then bring it to the inside and do that same motion. You can see it's starting to activate the muscles in your forearm. After you do that for a while, you're gonna go outside to inside. As we're warming up here, um, Osar Mka, an older gent working with a walking stick. Yeah, you better clear out. Amen, that's the truth. You're going side to side. While we're warming up, I wanted to mention that I've started a channel on Rumble. Those, some of you know what Rumble is. Rumble is just an alternative video site that does not censor their creators for speaking truth. Good afternoon, Garen, it's good to see you. So if you're on Rumble, please find me on Rumble. I'd like to grow over there. That's an alternative. Sometimes I say things and I think, uh-oh, they're coming after me. They're gonna bump me off the channel because I spoke the truth. You never know when that will happen. We see that all the time. We do see that that happens. I try to avoid it, but anyway, if you're on Rumble, please find me on Rumble. Follow me there. Eventually I'll be making content just on Rumble. So you're going side to side, your stomach's up and in, your abs are tight, you're getting power in your forearms. Now let's go into some basic strikes. Your hand is here on the crook. You're gonna have the crook facing behind you in a traditional way. Lean on it, slide your hand down, and pick it up into a better position. Put the cane between you and the threat. Hello, Patrick, it's good to see you. 
From here, I want you to bring it in to the same shoulder. This is your right hand, put it on your right shoulder, and you're gonna slice through. Hello, Brandon Wong. The uh, weather has been rainy all day. Some of you know I'm in southeast Florida. Right now in southwest Florida, a hurricane is coming ashore. A big one, a really big one. In the St. Pete, or um, not St. Pete, can't think, well, I can't do two things at once. Fort Myers, Fort Myers is getting it first, I think. But you're slicing through, coming all the way, and then to the other shoulder. We just have a lot of wind, there were tornado warnings all night. I didn't sleep well last night. My phone was going off every five minutes with a tornado warning. Slice through, slice back, one, two, and then turn your palm up. You're gonna bring it up and across for the fourth angle, or third angle, slicing from here and then here. This almost looks like a sword, or if you're familiar with Filipino martial arts, like Kale, Salat, um, where there's a Arnis, a Screma. So you're gonna go down twice, and then you're gonna turn and come up twice. So one, two, three, four, and then I want you to come across horizontally, turn it, and bring it back. So you have a horizontal strike. Imagine that this is the threat. You say stay back, you get in a better position, put the cane between you and him, he keeps coming. You can start with a simple thrust. That stops him, bring it into here, and then into the side of the head, or into the wrist, down into the knee, into the lower leg, but all starting from here, slide, lift, thrust, pull, angle one, angle two, bring it up, and bring it up. Bring it through horizontally, horizontally. All your horizontal strikes, all the strikes can be done at different heights. You can go up to the head for self-defense, into the middle of his body for self-defense, smashing into the knees or the thighs, all with those simple, I just lost the tip, all those simple horizontal strikes. Practice those, slide your hand down, get in a better position, make yourself a smaller target, always keep your cane, your walking cane for self-defense between you and the threat. Use this simple self-defense tool to thrust. Strike one, strike two, three, four, five, six, and then thrust there, coming straight down in this vertical strike. Think about right in the middle of his operating system. Knock him out, knock him unconscious for self-defense. End the fight quickly. Thrust, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then eight. After you brain him, bring it straight up and with one more thrust, finish him for self-defense. So from here, we're gonna call that the threat. Slide down, push. You're gonna come through one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and thrust. Now those basic thrusting and slicing strikes are where I'd like you to start. Hello, Patrick. Now, from here, Oh, I wanted to uh, show you guys something else. I'm doing rumble. I don't know if you can see in the mirror, there's a television right there. I've got it set up for portal and Zoom, Facebook portal and the Zoom. Uh, Greetings from Germany. I'm going to um, have a virtual class that you can join. So I'm setting it up. I, I'm gonna have two structures, one on Zoom, one on Facebook. So you can join from anywhere in the world. It'll be a small fee. You'll send me the fee in advance. I'll, uh, see you online and then we'll let you in and we'll all train together. There'll be 30 minute classes. So you're gonna slide from here. I've turned, you've turned your cane so that now the crook is facing out. And from this position, you're gonna do the same thing. You're gonna slide down the back of the cane. Before here, we were sliding down the front to get in a better position. Now from here, slide down the back. This all comes from Irish shillelagh fighting, or shillelagh, from the Irish stick fighting. From here, I want you to punch or thrust using this big fist, this big knuckle, this big hammer. So this just comes straight in. From here, you're gonna push in, pull your back to your ear like you're answering your phone. Get your other hand on it. Now you have a stronger position. You're gonna bring it straight in and down, coming through. Um, Matthew says he started working with two canes again. I wanna talk about that real quick. Matthew um, has mobility uh, issues, limited mobility. What he's talking about is you can lean on one, strike with the other one, strike with the other one, strike, rip, right? Bring it through, bring it back. You can put it in the other position, pushing, striking, all while maintaining your balance using one cane to lean on. So you can, look at that fancy cane. By the way, these canes are 
uh, links below if you want to see how they're made and what they're made out of. But you can use two canes. You can do this from a, a, a wheelchair. You can do all these moves, both in training and in self-defense, if you're sitting on a, at the bus station. If your uh, sand dude says, thanks for the, thank you, thanks for being here, sand dude. You can do this if you're um, on a plane, on a train, at the bus station, on the bus, any place that you're sitting, you can do the same techniques that you are standing. You might have to modify a little bit, but practice that. And I also suggest, even if you have no problem with your mobility and standing is easy for you, you should also practice it from sitting. You should have all these skills of self-defense from all different positions. Get on the ground, lie on your back, see what works while you're lying on your back. But imagine someone's trying to kick your teeth in and you're using your cane to stop him from doing that. Now, we're here with your crook facing out. You slide down the back. I want you to punch, answer your phone, thrust with two hands, and then I want you to bring this down on top. Think of this big tooth right there. And this tooth, some people asked me this question the last time. They said, you know, the tooth sometimes comes this way. It's just a bevel that's cut into it for self-defense. Either it comes this way, sometimes it goes that way, and sometimes, like in this one, it comes into the middle. And why? Which one is right? Uh, salute. Uh, Liquid Child says, salute from Spain. Thank you, Liquid Child, for being here. You're great as well. It's just the style. It doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be this way. It doesn't have to be that way. But what it does is imagine this chopping down into the skull or into the eye socket or into the ear or into the teeth or the nose or the, the, the neck. That's going to either rip flesh or it's going to, it doesn't penetrate like a knife. It's not sharpened, but what it does is it's going to compress it in a way and it's going to hit all those nerves and you're going to do real damage for self-defense. It's a very effective technique. So after you answer your phone and you thrust, chop it down, think about top of his head, into his neck, into his chest, into the ribs. Think about, imagine if you put that right into one of those ribs and it goes in right between those ribs and you pull for self-defense. It's gonna be very, very effective. Yeah, Patrick Starr says really doesn't wanna be hit with a cane. Amen to that. Um, Garen asks about the, the, the canes, the palm rest. What happens is on those canes, there is a little attachment back here and the rest, that, and that, that just gives you one more nasty tooth coming out. So there's a tooth back here and a tooth here. And uh, the palm rest gives you a lot more uh, mobility, strength. A lot of people it, who use canes for mobility don't necessarily like this crook, but this crook allows you to take it so many places. I, I'm finding that you can also take a straight cane in just about as many places, but this is actually protected by the law. Um, this is hard on some wrists. So having that extra piece on the back, Garen, as I'm sure you know, gives you a lot more yeah, Awkward the Cast says rib injuries are the worst. Amen. You can't breathe for months. But that gives you a little bit more control. I mean, it's a, ergonomically, it's a little bit better on your wrist. It's a little bit easier if you're putting your body weight on it all day. But either way, whether you have that palm rest, which comes off the back or not, all these techniques will work with the palm rest on the back. That just gives you an extra striking surface that for self-defense is very effective. So from here, come in and down. So this one more time, slide down the back thrust, answer the phone, thrust, chop and rip, chop and rip. Now, from back to this position where the cane is coming from the back, sliding it down the front again. Let me grab my tip there. I need a new one. It's getting kind of old. From here, coming down, picking it up into the front hand. All of your techniques, if you can keep this hand down, by your waist, you're gonna be a lot stronger. From here, coming up into this better position, put your other hand there, so it's almost like you're in this grip where you're doing push-ups. Before I had you like this, now your hands are like this. They're just, one's not better than the other, it's just different. From here, your hand slides down the front, pull it up to here, and then leave it on your waist. Leave this attached. From here, I want you to step and use your entire body weight to thrust. You're gonna find, especially if you're not as strong as you used to be or if you have some strength and mobility issues, this is going to be a much harder strike. And your target is here. His eyes are here. He's spitting and screaming. He's trying to hit you in the face, choke you, punch you, stab you. And you get this down here. It's kind of out of his 
uh, line of sight, right? He's looking up here, and you're just going to step, and you're going to use your whole body and stick that into that soft, thin, uh, fleshy part that we all have between the belly button and the privates, that thin fascia of muscle that holds all your guts in. You hit someone there, puts them in a spasm, and they fall to the ground. So from here, from here, step. But I want you to also see that you can adjust with this front hand where you're going to hit him. You can stick up into his throat. You can go into the solar plexus. You can keep it in the groin. You can go into the inner thigh. That's a really sensitive area for a lot of people. The other thing about keeping it on your hip is if someone grabs it from the other side, this is really, yeah, Pete says, uh, stay dry and safe. Pete, where we are, we just have a lot of wind and rain. Um, yeah, liquid chalice is right in the stomach. We have wind and rain, I feel, for the guys over on the west coast. We happen to be on the east coast. It's a little bit hairier over here by the, right by the ocean because the wind pushes the waves up a little bit higher. But we just, you know, it's, it's just some fallen tree branches. But over there, they're getting pounded. So from here, someone grabs your cane, they can start to then pull it out of your hand and then beat you with it. And you don't want that to happen. You're going to keep your hand on it and you're going to turn and you turn. And notice that when you turn, you're turning your hips. Think of a little dance move, right? But the key is don't take it off of that hip. If you keep it locked on your hip, it's going to be hard for them to pull off. So for me, and they're going to be, it's going to be, they'll be pulling against your whole body weight. Here, if it's away, even just a, a fraction of an inch, they're going to be pulling against your arms. If their arms are stronger than your arms, they're going to rip it out of your hand. Their arms cannot be stronger than your whole body. I don't care how strong they are, your whole body is heavier than their arms are strong. So you're going to lock it here and you're going to make these turns. They're pulling it in this motion, you're going in a different direction. As they pull it, turn, if they resist, turn it back the other way, push down and then step. That motion of turning is going to make their hands go like this. They're either going to come in here or they're going to come up under here. But you need to practice this over and over. So you get in the position, here's our threat. From here, thrust, and then practice turn, turn down, and then push again. When you turn down, their hands are coming down, and then you push again, you're gonna knock them off. You guys have been awesome. Please check me out on Rumble, um, because I, 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 I just I can see the writing on the wall. I don't know how long it is. I think uh, you're gonna see more and more violence, <laughs> more and more criminality coming into the country because the borders are wide open and Venezuela has been emptying all of their prisons. They're sending them all up north. They're all arriving. And I'm not saying it's I'm not saying all Venezuelans because they're not. Most of the Venezuelans I know are the most beautiful, wonderful people in the world, but all the criminals are criminals. Criminals are coming up. There's a lot more crime. Illinois, the whole state is getting rid of bail, just like they did in New York and in Chicago and all these other cities. So you're gonna see crime continuing to explode. I want you to stay safe. But, and, and I want to be able to talk about it every once in a while, not in a political way, but just in a real way. And I think that's going to get me in trouble a little bit. So go over to Rumble and follow me on Rumble if you haven't done so already. And I really appreciate you uh, for doing that. And again, no matter what our politics are, it's your right to defend yourself. I firmly believe it. it's your God given right. It's not man hasn't given you that right. No one has given you that right. It's a right worth fighting for. Some things are worth fighting for. Some things are worth dying for. And if you don't stand for something, you fall for anything. We know that, right? So we have to do something. Thank you, Matthew. You stay safe. Everybody stay safe and we'll see you. Uh, the, the wind's not going to blow us away. But if it does, we'll be outside and we'll do this class outside. But starting next week, I'm going to have, just want to show you, got it set up today, the new portal. We're going to do Zoom classes and Facebook classes. Facebook has a, pro, it's a product called Portal. It follows me around the room and it zooms in. I have some students who can't hear, so they read lips. And so I, I've used this for three years now. I've been teaching classes for three years and I'm gonna open that up to a group class. I always do one-on-one. -on -one. We're gonna do a group class format and see how that works. I think that's our next step so we can continue to train together. Please give me a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't done so already because that helps us grow this virtual dojo. You guys have been awesome. I'll see you in a little bit.